Welcome back. I'm still in conversation with Dr. Peter McLaughlin, the headmaster of the Dune School. Uh, Dr. Peter McLaughlin, you have an illustrious list of past pupils mm -hmm. uh, who have led or come to lead India in diverse fields. You have, you, your alumni included Rajiv Gandhi, Pranoy Roy, Karan Thapar, uh, Mani Shankar Iyer, the historian Ram Guha, the writer Amitav Ghosh, Olympian Avinav Bindra, and the list goes on. That's right. What is the moral of the story? I think the moral of the story is that you can take boys from, or girls in a similar uh, setting with, with school with a similar ethos. You can take children from any background, socioeconomic background, you can take children from any, any caste, religion, whatever it is, and, and you can turn them into people who will make a difference in, in the world, who will ser serve others, serve the nation, uh, and do extraordinary things in, in, a, in a wide diversity of fields. Um, because I think many schools feel that in order to produce people who are going to make a difference in the world, they have to be narrowly selective, whether it's by class or caste or religion or income yeah. or whatever it might be. Um, so it shows that um, you could, a good school, an outstanding school, can take a human being from virtually any background and turn them into, into, into someone special. Absolutely. Uh, when you brought me up to your room, uh, I mean, I found that huge list of uh, alumni, you know, tied up on the wall, mm -hmm. Vikram Sheth and everyone else which I named. It's really, really fascinating. But I have to ask you this question. Uh, how has the Dune School changed with the times? And I'm sure you have been asked this question, uh, why is this gender thing, uh, I mean, that why is the Dune School not encouraging or not starting education for girls? I mean, I'm sure you, you, you have confronted with this question several times. Yes, I mean, I, I'm quite unusual in the sense that I've been the, the head of co-ed schools, uh, I've been the head of uh, an all-girls school, an all-girls boarding school, and an all-boys boarding school. So for me, it's, gender is, is an issue, which I address, but um, the, the first thing a parent needs to think about is, is the school I'm going to send my son or daughter to an excellent school, an outstanding school, whether it's co-ed or single sex? Um, I think uh, in the age range of doing school boys and girls of the same age, there is, there is a strong case for saying that uh, certainly between the ages of 12 and 16, they should be educated um, in, 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 a, in a separate learning environment. Um, girls in, in one class got boys in another. So something like a diamond-shaped school uh, is, is becoming uh, an interesting feature of some educational systems um, because they do inhibit each other. Uh, boys and girls are going through different struggles at that yeah. age, and they, can, and they can distract each other. Um, they can add value to each other, of course, um, as equal citizens and fellow human beings. Right. Um, but increasingly what's happening is boys are showing off to girls uh, that they are what the Americans call slacker dudes, mm -hmm. and they're uh, sprawling uh, back and yeah. feet up on, on the coffee table with a baseball cap around the wrong right. way, which we don't have, um, uh, to try to impress girls that they're too cool for school. Equally, girls feel that they have to hide their intellectual qualities under, under a bushel uh, in order to impress boys with that sort of celebrity type of personality which is emerging. So it's becoming an increasingly difficult problem. Mm -hmm. So it, at that time when boys and girls are growing to their own gender consciousness, mm -hmm. I think to, separ to separate that them. Is, that is necessary. It's, it, mm. it may not be necessary for all children, but certainly for a very right. large number of children. Now, you see, your students have gone to almost all the Ivy League institutions. That's right. What is the secret? I think it's expectations. I think the major problem uh, in, the, in the world uh, with respect to, to education is low expectations of teachers of, of their of children. So they say to them, you're not very good at something, so it's okay if you don't, don't try too hard. Uh, what we say is that, um, rather like the old Chinese uh, uh, idea that the fruits of genius are available to everyone. For a genius, it's a bit quicker. But for the rest of us, <laughs> including myself, yeah. you, um, you have to set out, you have to be yeah, motivated, and you have to throw a lot of it more effort into it. So we have very high expectations of people. And what we, what we do is our boys are constantly um, delighted with the fact that they've exceeded their own expectations, gone right. Right beyond them. Now, uh, India. India is a country of 1.2 billion people and counting, and 50% of them are young. What does this mean to you as an educationist? 
Well, I think it's a huge opportunity, but uh, the demographic um, dividend can very easily turn into a you know, demographic bomb. And I think that's an urgent problem. I mean, the country needs to produce one million jobs a month for 20 years without stopping to, to sop up the, just those new job seekers who, who, who are going what to come onto market. What is your prescription, very briefly? Uh, uh, we, um, uh, the, the government has to massively increase the percentage of GDP uh, committed to education and also clear away many of the, ob the obstacles to India's f flourishing economically. Absolutely. Lastly, Dr. Peter McLaughlin, what would you like to tell uh, you know, the young aspirational Indians? What I'd like to say is that you have one of the most astonishing cultural and intellectual traditions in the world. Um, you do amazing things with a system which very often is not very helpful to you. Once you're freed of those shackles, nothing can stop this, this generation of Indians. There's such huge intellectual capital, such huge human capital in this country that once legislation is put in place, uh, once an educational system is put in place, so, so that people are not trying to circumvent that, that it will actually boost them, that this country, nothing can stop it. Absolutely. On that cautiously positive note, Dr. Peter McLaughlin. Thank you very much for being on my show. Not at all. It's been an honor to be on your show. Pleasure having thank, you. Thank you.